this week's preview show. BBC Radio Silence. Chris Temple is alongside me as we look ahead to tomorrow's big game at Old Trafford. Here's what's coming up. We'll look back at Wednesday night and that 4-1 defeat to Newcastle. And our attention will then turn to tomorrow at 3 o'clock and that game against Manchester United. Well, we are going to start off with that game on Wednesday night. Chris, sum up your thoughts on that one for us. Um... This is the X-rated version or the polite version. This is the family version, isn't it? Um, it was absolutely, it was absolutely dreadful. Uh, it really was. Um, it, you know, it's it's hard to come on and say that because the one thing I will say, and that this is the one thing that sometimes can be doubted, is that players are trying, but there wasn't enough fight. Um, there wasn't enough everything about that. It wasn't enough quality. We know how brittle they are when they concede the first goal. It was a disastrous first goal. Jefferson Lerma doesn't make too many mistakes, um, but that early in the game, I mean. It's, a, it's an, a terrible start given the build-up and how you know the magnitude of what everyone was talking about that game meant. Um, so we have seen the, the confidence is a little bit fragile and that was the, the worst possible start. Second one goes in, um, you know, 25 minutes later again, it's all too easy. There's some photos doing the rounds of 10 Bournemouth players in their own penalty area and Sean Longstaff still having five yard, a five-yard radius around him with no one near him. So two very, very poor goals to give away. And 2-0 down at half-time for the second home game in a row. Um, you, you, I couldn't for a second see them coming back. They had, what, five minutes at the start of the second half, if we're being generous, where you thought, OK, well, something's happened at half-time and they've come out. And now with a bit of belief that then there was a few passes pinging around and one or two tackles going in. But it honestly only lasted five minutes. And Newcastle will not have an easier away game, I wouldn't have thought. Martin Dubravka, you know, second goalkeeper at, at uh, Vitality in a row, who could have had a deck chair and a cigar had absolutely nothing to do. Um, so, yeah, all in all, I think the one thing that irks fans is that it just didn't look like the players were up for the fight in that game. Um, you, you can give your all 100%, um, go into every single tackle, and sometimes you'll get beaten by a better team. But as long as you've left it all out there and you've looked like you've absolutely cared and you've given, you know, your, your body and your soul, if you like, for the, for the cause, and I'm afraid most of the team didn't look like that was the case, I feel slightly sorry that people have to that they have to do interviews. That's part of part and parcel, and then they get criticised for don't do your talking on the uh, on the microphone, do it on the pitch. But they have to speak, and there's only so much they can say. So it is hard um, for players to come out and try and put it into words. But I mean, it, it will be an easier task if they could put it into action on the pitch. That's for sure. And I wanted to mention that that early goal. It was very similar to to Palace. You know, going behind early and. You know, from there, it's always an uphill task, isn't it? Especially when you, know, you need the three points and, and a point isn't necessarily good enough. Well, only two points recovered from losing positions all season, which is a, a terrible record going behind. And, you know, the, the tag of comeback kings, remember that? Comeback kings. I mean, any time they'd like to resurrect round that, round roundabout now would be great. It would be great to be uh, obviously not coming from behind and actually getting the first goal. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, uh, in this run with the confidence at a, at a low as it is at the moment, um, and feeling like the world's against you all of a sudden, then, you know, unfortunately, going too behind, you know, in the first half on your home soil, I, I personally never felt they were going to come back. I think the game was over then. Lots of people said the game was over when it went to 1-0. Um, but obviously anything can happen in that time. Second half, you know, David Brooks hit the bar. Dom Solanke, that one that spins back off the post. And Joshua King's just offside. I mean, they don't officially count as efforts on target, those. We were, I actually didn't know during the commentary the other day. I had to look up at the time whether they'd been counted as efforts on target. but. Uh, they're not because the goalkeeper wasn't forced into to doing anything. So, yeah, it was still, uh, I'm afraid, a very, very poor shots on target return, none. Um, and that's a sorry tale at the moment without, uh, without Callum Wilson. But even with him in the team, it hasn't been a whole lot better. So it is a case of, I know Eddie's message in this press conference on Friday morning has been, we can't look back at the Newcastle game anymore. We simply have to, with a quick turnaround, move forward. And I think they'll be looking to, get that out of the system pretty quickly. The players obviously had their chat after the game, which the manager was trying to sort of play down and say it wasn't really, you know, a, a player's tete-a-tete. -tete. It was just the fact they wanted to talk it through amongst themselves. All the staff left the dressing room, as far as I understand, and left all the players to it for about half an hour before they all came out and did their post-match. And hopefully, you know, a few words were said um, in terms of, you know, trying to, constructively, in terms of trying to find the answers and, and trying to find where it's going, going wrong at the moment. Um, I just think the the leadership thing is a big is a big one at the moment. The the leaders on the pitch, um, the, there's no Simon Francis, there's no Andrew Sturm, and Dan Gosling hasn't really got on the field. Um, I mean, obviously he came on and scored, but hasn't really got on the field as much as he would have liked. 
Um, so I think the leadership is an issue. Um, Eddie Howe acknowledges they're a quiet team. Um, and obviously that's more noticeable in an empty stadium. You hear other teams shout and you don't hear so much from Bournemouth. So I do think that some leaders are going to have to come from somewhere. You can't suddenly, you know, instill, you know, vocal skills into people that don't really have them on the pitch. But some, some people have got to stand up. Some of the senior players have got to stand up. And just finally, I want to ask you about Lloyd Kelly and Arnout Dan Juma. I saw you post on social media. You thought they were kind of the pick of the bunch. What did you, what did you make of them on, on Wednesday night? I mean, I'm, I'm searching, Zoe, to be honest with you. I'm searching for, to try to find somebody to pick out and not make it a completely negative set of reflections, which is very difficult. Um, and I always like to try and you know, identify a player or two I think's done well. Um, I thought Arnold Denjuma, you know, with what he had available to him in terms of the service he got and, and the time he got on the ball, I thought he looked a threat to the fullback a couple of times. He, you know, he's, he's certainly not Adama Traore or Alan Samaximan or whatever in current form anyway. Um, but he does, when he gets the ball, look like something could happen. And just with that better decision with the final ball, maybe trying to take on one too many players or, or do one too many Mark Pugh cutbacks, um, you know, sometimes that's, the, that's where he falls down. But certainly he looks like if you can get him the ball, with every game, he'll get better because he hasn't played a lot of football. So I, I continue to, to think that Dan Juma is a, is a threat on the left. Whether he'll play this game, I'm not sure because I have a hunch that Bournemouth will go you know, quite defensive in this game. And I think there's probably other choices who would be better suited um, wide on the left than him for that. Um, and Lloyd Kelly, I thought, you know, I feel a bit sorry again for him that he's, his full Premier League debut was at that game. He won't want to remember that, I wouldn't think. He's obviously played two full games now, the loss at Burton. And then the 4-1 defeat at home to Newcastle. So not a great start results-wise for him. But I thought he did OK. I thought he, you know, he did fine. Um, defensively, there'll be some question marks. He was up against Sam Maximan for um, the, pretty much the first half. He, he played on the right rather than the left. So he certainly had his, uh, his hands full. I thought he got forward pretty well when he could. He's obviously comfortable receiving the ball. Um, I do like the look of him. And I think he'll, I think he'll continue to, to stay in the team. Absolutely. Well, next up for the Cherries is that trip to Old Trafford tomorrow. And Eddie Howe has been previewing that in his pre-match press conference. Got a couple of players we need to check today, Jeremy. Um, we'll see how they are before we uh, name our squad. Um, we've been written off and we've managed to overcome that, that, um, that mindset. And against the odds, we've come through and achieved great things. And we're going to have to call on all of those resources now. I'm still very much with the team. I'm still very much on the positive mindset that we can do it. Um, but certainly we're going to have to elevate everything to a new level from what we've seen in the last few games. Yeah, I think they're a, a very strong team and they're developing from their perspective very nicely. They've signed some top quality players and I think um, the momentum is certainly with them at the moment. Historically, if you look at our journey in the Premier League, we've always been able to pick up big results against big teams and ultimately at the end of the season, they have made the difference. Um, we're going to need to do that again, probably at a greater scale than we've ever done before, but it is possible. And if it's possible, we have to believe we can do it. So, yes, we need a good start to the game. Um, there's no doubt about that. We need to imprint ourselves and our strengths on the game. And we need to defend with the right mindset. I'll be urging my players to do that. And I think we're capable of doing it. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in this morning's press conference. Chris, it's a, it's a huge game at, at Old Trafford and they're in fine form, aren't they? Uh, we've seen it a few times, haven't we, where teams have clicked into gear all of a sudden just as they, uh, they play Bournemouth. I mean not just into gear. They're 15 unbeaten in all competitions. Manchester United, they've really seemed to have got it ticking. Bruno Fernandes has obviously come in and, and made a, a huge difference having Paul Pogba back fit, whatever his future holds. Um, at the moment, he seems to be sort of fully invested and committed to the cause. Uh, Matic obviously in there as well as the third part of that sort of midfield trio. So, yeah, they really seem to have, have, uh, have got it moving in the right direction to resurrect their Champions League hopes. And you look at the table, you know, with Chelsea getting beaten by West Ham in midweek, which was obviously a terrible result as far as Bournemouth are concerned. And I mean, that just compounded the night, didn't it? West Ham scoring that last minute winner. It was just the worst possible night on Wednesday. But yeah, United 52 points, um, two behind Chelsea, Wolves on their heels. It looks like a sort of a, a three or four horse race with Leicester for that, uh, those Champions League spots. So yeah, certainly from United's point of view, um, they've, they've kicked on really after a, a sticky first half of the season, which of course includes a defeat at Bournemouth. And I think that's the one positive that we're able to, to drag up in, this, uh, in the build-up to this game is that Bournemouth are going for a double over Manchester United. Um, obviously, we've never won at Old Trafford, but and, and it would look a tall order on this occasion. But worth pointing out that that United win earlier in the season came off the back of that sort of horrible little run of poor results, including the nil-nil at home to Norwich and the nil-nil against Watford, where everything sort of ground to a halt. They stopped conceding goals, but they stopped scoring them as well. And 
when you look back at those two points dropped at home to Norwich in that nil-nil, um, you know, that, those two points are looking pretty big right now. And I think we probably said at the time, let's hope we're not coming back to talk about these two points later in the season. And here we are doing exactly that. So I think, you know, Bournemouth's ability to pull a shock result out from, you know, seemingly nowhere uh, is, is definitely there. They, they've done it in the past. Uh, there's nothing in their recent three games that will tell you they're going to go to Manchester United and have a chance of getting anything. The one thing you can say is, you, well, you'd like to say they couldn't be that bad again. Um, having been poor against Palace, slightly better against Wolves, they went backwards against Newcastle. Um, the, the, the saving grace, I suppose, is that the expectation is not on them in this game um, in terms of the, the 11 against 11. It's, the pressure is on a bit more now than it would be if you were just going to Manchester United generally because of the way they've played in the first three games. So it does add that little bit more heat. If you get a point at Manchester United, that's a brilliant result. Um, and then I think Spurs and Leicester are the home games now where obviously Spurs have lost to Sheffield United in midweek. Leicester are a bit in and out at the moment. They seem to have started to struggle a little bit as well. So you'd say that both of those games are not, you know, not would be on the realms of possibility that Bournemouth could get something. So I think re, re restoring sorry, a bit of confidence or a lot of confidence or some confidence has got to be the key going to United. If you get beaten by the better team, they are, you know, on paper, they're better footballers and all being equal, they'll win the game. But if Bournemouth go there and perform well and show the hunger and the desire and the fight that the fans and the manager want to see, but still come out on the wrong side of it, yes, it doesn't help in the table, but it probably does help for those remaining five games afterwards. So, yeah, the West Ham result, you know, midweek, taking them to 30 points was a disaster. So now it's out of Bournemouth's hands. Everyone's played the same amount of games. And, of course, Bournemouth slipped a place in the table by conceding those four as well. So, um, yeah, one point to find on Watford. Um, goal difference now, level with Aston Villa. Um, and West Ham, you know, probably Brighton need one more result. They play Norwich um, on lunch, uh, Saturday lunchtime before Bournemouth play Manchester United. So, Brighton could probably be safe if they win that game. West Ham need two more wins. I mean, Bournemouth need to find three wins from six games at least. And you mentioned just there a shock result. I want to take you back to March 2017, where Bournemouth not in great form. They're going away to Old Trafford and they pull a 1-1 draw out of the bag. And, you know, they, they really need to draw on, on the passion they showed there, the desire they showed there and, and do the same on Saturday. Yeah, amazingly, I managed to miss that game, um, which was a shame because, you know, the one time Bournemouth had got a result at Manchester United was the time I didn't go. Um, but yeah, Andrew Sermon got sent off, didn't he? Arthur Boric thinks they did penalty. Um, so yeah, it was, th that's the kind of, you know, when you go down to 10 men at Old Trafford, you would perceive yourself to have no chance. But, um, you know, to be able to get a result. Those are the kind of, you know, the Chelsea away games, a prime example. The absolutely no chance that Bournemouth on paper before that game at Chelsea back in December were going to go there and win. No chance. Absolutely none. And yet somehow pulled out a 1-0 win, a clean sheet. Um, so those are, at the moment, that they are the crumbs for Bournemouth fans to hang on to. Is It's happened already this season. Um, we can keep trying to build it up and, you know, instill a bit of hope. Um, so far, all the hope we've had has been sort of knocked down and flattened. But I'm, I'm keeping the faith that there is a shock result in there somewhere. Um, you know, if you have a fiver on Bournemouth this weekend and they do pull off a shock result, you will be laughing all the way to the bank. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and in terms of our team news, obviously we know there'll be no Callum Wilson. He's having the second game of, of his suspension. Jefferson Lerma will be available having, having a, a not pick up a yellow card on Wednesday night. And Philip Billing Jeff, and David Brooks, they'll, they'll both come through come through the first few games uninjured as well, haven't they? Yeah, and he's uh, not too keen. He wasn't too keen to name names in his press conference as to one or two who were just, uh, they were checking on ahead of the turnaround. I saw Jose Mourinho this week was saying that the quick turnaround of matches should actually help players' fitness at this stage of the season when they're trying to sort of get back into to top gear and not many teams have actually managed to find their top gear um, so far. So, yeah, Eddie says probably the likes of David Brooks and people, you know, it'd be not as easy just to, to turn around very quickly. They had Friday morning on the training ground. That's it between the Newcastle game and the Manchester United game. So no real time to, to go through anything other than a few set plays and, um, you know, a bit, of, a bit of talk, if you like. But yeah, in terms of the team, I think, they'll, I think they need to go defensive. I don't think you can go to Old Trafford and, and be too open um, because if they get done three or four um, and, and it's, the game is over early, then that is going to be another sort of blow to the confidence. So while the expectation isn't there this weekend at Old Trafford, I think the, the, the manner of performance certainly is in terms of there has to be some, some fight, there has to be some leadership, there has to be some showing that you care. And it's all the cliche, showing that you care for the badge and for the fans. And, you know, I heard Jose Mourinho, again, I'm, I'm reading off Jose Mourinho quotes because last night 
Tottenham didn't play well against Sheffield United. He was saying if these players have any respect for their job and for their professionalism, that's a bit strong in terms of how Bournemouth are um, approaching things at the moment. And sometimes, you know, bigger ego players at the bigger clubs can be accused of sort of downing tools occasionally, maybe unfairly. But from Bournemouth's point of view, it is a case of showing they care. Um, and I think from that point of view, I wouldn't be surprised to see a 5-4-1 um, with sort of Joshua King maybe up on his own. Uh, I, I personally would see Junior Stanislas in the team ahead of Dan Juma from a more defensive point of view. Um, with, with, and I'd also definitely bring in Dan Gosling. 100% he has to play, if you ask me, in terms of everything they've been missing, which is that drive and that energy and enthusiasm. Someone that cares. Spoke well to you guys on AFCB TV after the game on Wednesday, even though he'd only come on for the second half. Um, and I think I wouldn't be, even be surprised to see Chris Mepham get thrown in as a, as a third centre-half. So a sort of a Cook, Ake, Mepham back three with Smith and Kelly either side. Lerma and Gosling, central midfield, Stanislas, Brooks, King. I'm not picking the team for Eddie, obviously, but, and I haven't heard anything, but that's what I would do. Well, plenty of options for Eddie Howe there. Now then, that's what we've got time for today. If you are around on Saturday, listen to Chris and Willow on AFCB TV. They'll be bringing you live updates from Old Trafford. We'll be back next week to preview our midweek game with Spats. Bye for now.